Hello everyone and welcome to yet another build video RNC here. Now a lot of people have been asking me to make a Magic and Nightblade build and the reason why I was a little bit hesitant to make a Magic and Nightblade build is because they're not as strong as all the other Magicka classes this patch. Magicka Sork out DPSs them in ranged fights. In melee fights they get out DPS by Magicka DK and Magicka Templar. Honestly our group is not even running a Magic and Nightblade right now but there is a benefit to running a Magic and Nightblade sometimes in groups when you have some Stam DPS in the group. Because of their passives that come from the Assassination Tree Hemorrhage, a successful critical hit gives nearby allies minor savagery, increasing weapon crit strike rating by 657 for 20 seconds. Minor savagery is really, really hard to get. This is one of the only ways to get it, actually. So when you are running Stam DPS, it is a good idea to always have a Nightblade in the group. But otherwise, their DPS is not terrible, it's not the best, but here's the build, let's go over it. So for the character sheet on our main bar, we're running 42,500 max magicka, 18,500 max health, 2k spell damage, and 70% crit with a sharpened weapon. Our magic recovery sits at 930, but it's not very important. I am a high elf, I recommend for pure PvE and trials being a dark elf because again you have engulfing flames in the group from the magic of DKs so your flame damage will be very very high and buffed in group play. But overall if you want to dabble in PvP as well I do recommend using a high elf and the damage difference is very very minor. My character is a vampire again for the undeath passive as usual and for the extra recovery gives us a little bit more sustain. We're using a Thief Mundus Stone to boost our critical chance and we're using the max health and magic of food that gives us the best results for sure. For our buff potions again we're using the Essence of Spell Power. Now again we create this with Cornflower Lady Smock, Water Hyacinth but you can save yourself the Water Hyacinth and just use Cornflower Lady Smock and take out the Major Prophecy which you get from double barring Inner Light. So let's get right into the gear. Now there are a few really really nice options for the Magic and Nightblade as far as gear goes. What I'm using right now is the Scathing Mage, Max Magicka, Spell Crit, Spell Crit, and when you deal direct damage with crits, you have a 20% chance to increase your spell damage by 516 for 6 seconds. Being that we crit so much on a Magic and Nightblade, our crits really really high, and again we are based off of crit damage, this stays procced a lot almost all the time so this set is very very strong in a magic and eye blade uh we're using all light all divines and again it's the five piece main on the body another really really nice option is the burning spell weave this is very strong on all magicka builds so if you don't want to farm scathing mage and imperial city prison a hundred times you can go and farm city of ash a hundred times Either way, both of these sets do pretty much the same amount of damage, it's just personal preference. I like to switch it up, so I'm using Scathing Mage. Another good set to use is the Necropotent set. It's a little bit easier to farm. You can even buy it in vendors now. But honestly, it doesn't do as much damage, and you have to use the Shades, which is another skill slot wasted, so I really don't recommend this set all that much. But it is pretty good damage. For our monster set, we're using Valken Scoria. Reason being is because Magic and Eye Blades usually do play a ranged. If you're not playing ranged, you can definitely go with Grothdar. But honestly, if you're not playing ranged, then might as well go on a Magicka DK or a Magicka Templar. They do more damage melee range. So Scoria, one heavy, one medium, both divines. Make sure you have the Undaunted passive. For our next set, we're using the Infallible Aether, all on the jewelry, spell damage enchanted. And our from bar staff is an Infallible Aether Inferno staff. Weapon and spell damage enchant on that as well. Now, if you don't have an Infallible Aether staff, the other option is using two Maelstrom Inferno staffs, both on from bar and back bar. And another option, if you don't have a Maelstrom staff, is just using a Crafted. A better option would be if you don't have Infallible Aether, is using a moon dancer staff with moon dancer jewelry this works as well this one is ice it's not that great you definitely want inferno in trials 
but it works as well if you don't have anything else that is a part of the four piece set so moon dancer infallible aether and the maelstrom staff are best in slot otherwise just use a crafted staff it's you're not gonna your damage is not gonna suffer way too much let's get into the skills so our front bar first skill is inner light this is a given this is a must seven percent increase in max magic up five percent from the skill itself two percent from the passive our second skill is dampen magic now the reason why we don't use harness on a magic and i believe is again we have siphoning attacks which gives us almost an infinite amount of resources especially in trials when you're using magic orbs from the healers ellie drain foresight and things like that your magic is going to be very very high so might as well have a bigger shield using dampen harness is okay as well now you can always swap this out for sap essence if you're in an aoe situation otherwise for boss fights especially for hard modes you're going to want to keep dampen magic it's it's almost a must our next skill is siphoning attacks now obviously this is our main way to sustain but not only do we sustain with this skill there's also a passive while having a siphoning ability slotted you're increasing your max magic by eight percent so having a siphoning ability on the front bar is very 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 important our next skill is merciless resolve this is another must have the spectral bow that you shoot out does a ton of damage i've seen a crit for almost 80k at times in trials with all the debuffs on the boss and all the buffs from the group so definitely keep that up and proc it every single time it also gives you minor berserk increasing your total damage by eight percent for 20 seconds you're going to have that up in your build 100 percent of the time if you're doing the correct rotation lastly we're using force pulse now a lot of people ask why force pulse instead of using swallow soul or funnel health you can use swallow soul or funnel health but the weaves with swallow soul and funnel health are a little bit slower the damage is a little bit weaker the only thing that you do have in swallow soul or funnel health over that is the healing now again we already have a siphoning ability slotted so we really don't need that at all so i recommend using force pulse also force pulse is a little bit of extra cost but you get that back because the healers are all running elemental drain and if they're not make sure they're running it lastly our front bar is shooting star this is our main damage ulti until execution phase and this is what we're going to spam throughout the trials also gives you two percent magic from the magic controller passive which can be found here Every single Mage's Guild ability slotted increases your max magic and magic recovery by 2%. Moving on to the second bar, our off bar. Again, we're double barring inner light. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos, I've explained it before. There's a bug. If you take off inner light off your back bar, even if you're using spell power pots, your major prophecy goes away once you swap back to the bar without inner light. So if you don't have inner light on your back bar, you're gonna lose a ton of DPS during execute phase. So please make sure you keep double barring inner light. Some say you should swap this out for trap beast. Again, you're playing ranged Magicka Nightblade. If you don't wanna play ranged, go on a Magicka DK or a Magicka Templar. Next skill, blockade of fire. This is the strongest dot Magicka users have this is a must have this is a must keep up throughout the whole rotation so do keep that up even during execute crippling grasp this is a really really strong dot it has initial magic damage and additional dot damage over 12 seconds or i'm sorry over eight seconds on adds it also is really nice because it immobilizes enemies regardless keep this up 100 percent of the time the skill is also really nice because it's going to give you major expedition including your movement speed increasing it so it's a really nice skill make sure you keep it up 100 percent of the time next is twisting path twisting path is not the strongest dot however it does have a really nice range it's a pretty big aoe so in aoe fights do keep it up while using scathing mage do keep it up as well 
single target and execute phase, I would not keep this skill up. Unless you're using Scathing Mage. If you're using Scathing Mage, it does proc Scathing Mage, so do keep it up 100% of the time as well. Impale is our next skill. Now this is our execute. It hits really, really hard. Only use this when the boss is below 25% or an ad is below 25%. This is your execute. Spam it while keeping a blockade and cripple. And lastly, soul harvest. Now what I like to do when you get a little bit more complex and you're able to get inside is with soul harvest, you're doing 20% more damage against any enemy you use this on for six seconds. So what you would do is you would drop a meteor, use a potion, your soul harvest would be up right away. You would use soul harvest and the duration of your meteor for six seconds is ticking a lot harder. That's a nice trick that a lot of good magic and night legs use. So do practice with that a little bit as well. Also, while slotted and you kill an enemy with this slotted, so for example, when you execute an enemy with your impale, you do get 10 ulti back. So it's a really nice way to generate ulti as well. When the ad, when the ad or the boss drop below 25%, we stop using Meteor, we start using Soul Harvest on cooldown, we do Blockade, Cripple, and Soul Harvest, and Impale Spam. So that's it for the skills, let's move on to the champion points. Champion points don't look much different from all the other Magicka builds. It's 100 Magician to reduce the spell cost. 87 Arcanist. We put 83 into Elemental Expert. 45 into Elfborn. 28 into Spell Erosion. 1 into Staff Expert. And the rest we put into Thaumaturge in the Blue Tree. Now, I don't take credit for the CP. There are a lot of people in Tamriel Foundry that have done a lot of research around the CP. So I do give credit for that to them. The Red Tree, again, as I always say, it's really, really situational. This is what I used for Vetmal of Lorcaj. But a safe CP would be to put 80 in Hardy, 80 in Elemental Defender and 27 in Sebastian, but it's really up to you how you do the red CP. It's very, very situational. Okay, so let's take a look at the rotation of the Magic Knight Blade. So we always buff with Siphoning Attacks and Merciless Resolve before the fight. We proc our Inner Light, we drop our ulti, then we drink the potion, and then we start with a heavy attack. So first we start with Blockade, then Crippling Grasp, then Twisting Path, we're going to do three weaves with force pulls. As you see, our bow is already procced, so we're going to hit it after three weaves and then reproc our merciless resolve, switching bars to can uh, cancel the animation. Then we start over blockade, crippling grasp, twisting path, swap bars for the animation cancel, three weaves. There is our bow proc. We hit our merciless bow and we reproc merciless again. So the rotation is pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory, nothing too complex there. Now notice the trick that we used in the beginning with the potion. Every single time on a Magic and Night Blade, when you drink a potion, you get 20 ultimate back. So make sure that when you're using ultimates, especially high cost ones, like the Shooting Star, you use your potion right after you use your ultimate. So that after you drop it, you start with an initial 20 ultimate burst gain so again drop that ultimate first then use your potion so you can get 20 ultimate back right away and as i said before a really nice trick that a lot of good night blades use is they drop their meteor then they drink the potion they charge a heavy attack and as soon as their heavy attack hits they actually have a soul harvest up because they gain ultimate so fast so you'll be able to drop a Meteor, and if done right, drop a Soul Harvest right after that Meteor to really, really buff the damage of that Shooting Star. Where the rotation changes for the Magic Kanai Blade is during Execute Phase, which you will see in a second.
So as we approach 25%, we're approaching our execute phase in which we're simply using blockade, crippling grasp, try and get in as close as possible for soul harvest, and then we spam six impales until the blockade runs out. Now blockade is still a very, very strong dot worth keeping up and not just spamming soul harvest or impale. So we do use blockade and crippling still even during execute phases because those are very, very strong dots. Twisting path, not really worth keeping up during execute phase. Now notice how we're light attacking between every single skill. And if you can, do an animation cancel after the light attack skill and block. So that's it for the build. I hope that explained a little bit in depth of what you need to do, what the rotation is, what the skills are. Again, if this video helps you out, you liked it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And we are looking at the stamina classes next. So hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.